Hello, this is Loopline, and in this video I want to cover Scrapebox proxies and some new features in the Proxy Harvester. So the Proxy Harvester now has the option to whitelist and blacklist various proxy ports, which should come in handy. So if you click on Manage and you go here to Edit Black Whitelist, you can create a blacklist and or a whitelist and then enable them. Of course, clear them out down here as well of various proxy ports. So if you have proxy ports that you're specifically looking for, ports that you've identified as good or bad, that sort of thing, uh, then you can set those in there. Now ProxyGo is, uh, some of you may know him, some of you may not, I would consider him a proxy expert. Uh, and he went through actually and put together this list of ports. Uh, and he said these are good ports and uh, he scans proxies all day long. And he said anything else is pretty much junk, uh, specifically when it comes to working with Scrapebox. So I'll take his word at it and use these. So I'm just going to put these in my whitelist and save them off and enable the whitelist and then close this down. And so now whenever I harvest proxies from proxy sources, it's only going to pull in those particular uh, proxy ports. What I have here is a list of proxies that I just went ahead and pulled from um, the sources and I pulled a bunch of proxies and then tested them and filtered it down to like 100 and then cut it off. And so what I want to do here is talk about how you can find proxy sources. So there are proxy sources that come with Scrapebox. Uh, originally there weren't. Uh, they kind of tossed those in as a bonus just to kind of help people out to get started if you want to get started there, but they are heavily used, heavily, heavily used and they can quick the proxies there can quickly die uh, it's harder than ever to find google proxies especially because google has tightened things down and so they bought block proxies a lot quicker than they used to uh, and when you get heavily used sources then it's even harder to find good working google proxies now the proxies i went ahead and scraped up here are just uh, anonymous proxies. I didn't even check them against Google because for the purpose of this video it doesn't matter. Um, Scrapebox does update these sources from time to time and take off dead ones and add new ones so it can be good to get you started and especially for the purpose of this video you can tick off a few, harvest some proxies, test them, find some good proxies and then go from there. Now what we're going to do is I went ahead and um, all of these proxies should be relatively good. I just tested them before we started with the video and you can see they're, they're pretty good there. So I'm just going to leave off of that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first proxy here and I'm going to grab it, copy it there. And I'm going to go to a browser and I'm just going to go to Google and put it in quotes there. And I already did that and pull up what Google returns because obviously we know that this proxy and the rest of these are good proxies. So let's go find where on Google these proxies are. And if we can find these proxies and those pages that list these proxies obviously are going to list other proxies so we can find our own sources that way so for instance I'm just going to open up a few of these and go through here now a couple of things you want to keep in mind if you're adding your own sources there's two ways to really do it one is you can pull this up in a browser and kind of eyeball them and look to see if this is something you want to use now see this has a particular por proxy there so you probably this is not going to be something you'd want to load into Scrapebox. This however is a list of proxies so we may want to load that into Scrapebox and we can add our own sources by going to manage and going to harvest proxies and then we can go to add source and we actually can type in a URL import a list of URLs and then down here you also see there's an option for a Dexter API. So basically I would go ahead and type in a URL and I can put in a URL that I copy and paste like this one here for instance and add that as a proxy source and then when I want to go to harvest proxies I can see if Scrapebox can pull proxies from that source. Now some proxy sources and this is one of them use various methods such as wrapping their um, list of proxies in JavaScript or other means with, with which Scrapebox can't actually read and so in this case that proxy source isn't going to work. But the, the premise here is that either A, we can go ahead and open these up in a browser and see if they look viable, or B, we could just go and put this footprint in Scrapebox, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's find a few viable sources here. Here's a list of proxies, for instance. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if this is a post of a page, like it has a date in it, for instance, and it's like today's date, then 
it may be a great source today, but come tomorrow, it's not going to be a great source. They're going to create a new page on their site. So you want to look for a page that is kind of like a home page or a page like see this is a post number and you know most likely this isn't going to get updated um, you know tomorrow so this list is pretty well you can't really use this as a source you're, what you're doing is you're looking for places like this where you can put in a URL and the URL stays the same but the list of proxies gets regularly updated and sometimes you won't necessarily be able to tell but after a few days when you go testing them in Scrapebox, then, um, you know, if they're not producing proxies that work anymore a week from now, then you can go ahead and remove that source, of course. But so basically we could go through here and add in a few proxy sources uh, in Scrapebox. And so, for instance, I just added this one here that we were just on. Uh, and we got 30 proxy sources and I'm going to hit apply or 30 proxies rather then we can test these and let that run and it's just finishing up but you can see here we've got 14 proxies out of 30 uh, from that particular source and this there's no guarantee that this page isn't regularly updated uh, in fact it actually has an update of a date and time here which is uh, today so I would venture to guess that this particular page is updated regularly uh, and we should be able to go to other pages. You can see down here, this happens to be page three. We could go back to page one and grab that URL because each one of these pages is going to be different. And so this is handy where we can open a browser and see, okay, there's pages here. So now I can go in here and I can actually add each one of these pages. And so then I could go here and I could probably add it. I'd say that, you know, page number two here is going to be there and so let's we can add those for instance and hit start and it's going to go and pull sources from all three of those pages and we could go down out here I don't know how many pages there are but you get the point um, and get proxies from all those and so opening it in a browser can really be a great thing because you can eyeball see if the page looks like it's going to update or if it's a one-off or something like this obviously this is no good because this URL will never be used again to post proxies on most likely. Plus here we can see that there's multiple pages and that sort of thing. So that is one way that you can find proxies. Just basically go down through here. I mean there's 947 results that list that particular proxy. So go down through the first you know two three pages and then go down to the next proxy the good proxy in the list and um, just keep going through there until you have yourself a dozen nice sources or however many you need and then you can come back and harvest proxies all the time. The other way we could do it is basically just to do this, which would be take this footprint, put it over here in Scrapebox, and I'm not going to use proxies just because I'm harvesting only a short run here. And I probably am not going to set results to more than, um, oh, let's say 50, because I don't want to get too heavy here. I don't really want to try to harvest a thousand proxy sources, because if I try to go pull proxies from a thousand different pages, it's going to take forever for one, for two, um, I just don't need to come back with 100,000 proxies to have to sort through because it's, it's just, you don't need that many. And so I went ahead and harvested 50 sources here. So I'm just going to grab all these sources and I'm going to copy them. What I'm going to do is put them in a notepad file and then save them off. Let me do that right quick. And so I saved them off and then I'm going to go in here to manage or harvest proxies, add source by importing a list of URLs and then I'm gonna go and find that list of URLs which I saved here as proxy sources and then you can see I've got this whole list of URLs and so I'm just gonna go through here and tick them off and there's actually a tick up here at the top I usually just tick this and tick everything and then go through and uncheck the first 24 sources if I don't want to use those. We can see here uh, I've got the three or four sources I had plus the new 50. So let's go ahead and hit start and let this run through here and see. Now you can see stuff like this where it has this proxy and all these numbers on the end of these pages so most likely those are individual posts and these are not going to be good sources. So you can kind of get that, and it also lists the date. So you can see uh, this is November 2013, which is when I'm recording this. But those are posts, so those are probably going to just get tossed out as far as I'm concerned. Um, same thing going on down here. Uh, but you can see some of these have some significant you know, number of proxies. Uh, the thing is, is that you don't necessarily know if a good proxy comes from one of these sources or not. That's why just harvesting like I don't know if this 1811 proxies if they're good or bad when I get done harvesting because all these are gonna get mashed together 
So that's why it's a good idea to kind of eyeball them in Google and test them one by one. Um, but if you are the type of person who just wants to pull a proxy today and go harvest a giant list like this and jam it into Scrapebox and use this list for three days and then go in and delete the whole list and start over, then you can do that. You can delete the whole list by clicking on one, holding down the shift key and clicking on another in between there, and then you can hit remove and it removes those sources. So, you, so like I could remove all these date sources for instance and that sort of thing. So um, you can approach that either way you want it. Uh, I'm just going to hit apply and here I've got 6800 proxies after duplicates are removed and then I can just go through here and test and you notice that our filters are in place. It only kept proxies from our black and white list or our white list rather that we set up earlier and so that's great because those could be potential good proxies and I'm not going to test out the 6800 proxies in this video but you get the point uh, some other great proxy features are if you're looking for proxies from particular countries when you roll over the country here you can see that's from Brazil that's from Venezuela that sort of thing so you can right click and you can um, keep proxies from selected countries or remove selected countries you can keep proxies with selected ports and that sort of thing, which we're using the whitelist for, so it doesn't matter. And then I can mark these as SOX or non-SOX proxies just because I would need them to be marked as SOX if I have SOX proxies. So that's a couple different ways that you can harvest your own proxies and find your own proxy sources. As far as the ones I showed in this video, most likely a thousand people are going to go try to use them now, so I wouldn't even bother with the ones I showed in this video. I would just go get your own. They'll be fresher and newer anyways. Also, I have an old video on proxies, which I will link in the description. And then I have another video. If you are a person who has private proxies or shared proxies that you pay for, you can actually safely scrape with those proxies as well, and you don't have to use public proxies. So if you want to check that out, I'll also link that in the description. They're all here on the same YouTube channel. But you can check out my video on how to safely scrape even Google using private proxies and not get banned. I've scraped over 100 million URLs using less than 40 private proxies and let them run for days and days and days straight 24 7 never get them banned so again remember Google has tightened things down and in the video I give some ratios and then in the comments there of the video it pops up with a bubble there that says the ratios have changed and go more conservative so bear that in mind because as Google tightens things down and so does other engines you may have to use different ratios if you use that method but um, lots of proxy resources here check out the description for links to my old video and to the newer safely scraping with uh, private proxies video and then you can use these methods to really continuously get endless proxy sources and you can either open them with a browser or you can just do the um, slam method and grab them all and throw them in there and delete them after a few days or kind of monkey with them as you see fit. And that is how you can use Scrapebox to get proxy sources and get great proxies to use.